All right then, so we set up this box context in the last lesson, and now we need to start fleshing out these different functions inside it. And we're gonna start with the create book one down here. Now this function is for saving books to the database collection. And for this, we can use a method on the databases instance that we set up in the app write file a couple of lessons back. So I'm gonna say inside the try block, const new book is equal to await databases, and we need to make sure this gets imported from the apprat file from the lib folder. And then we'll use a method called create document and invoke it. So we use this method to save new records to a collection in the database. And as a first argument, we need to pass in the database ID, which we added up at the top of the file before. So we can just copy that constant name and then we can paste it down here inside the function call. Now, as a second argument, we need the collection ID to say what collection we want to save this new record to. And again, we added that collection ID before up at the top of the file. So we can just grab that and paste it down inside the function again, this time as the second argument. Now, as a third argument, we need to pass an ID for the record. And we can use the special ID class given to us by the upright package to make a, new, uh, a unique one for us. So we can just say ID, all in caps, make sure that gets imported from AppRite, and then we're gonna use a method on that called unique to generate the unique ID. All right, and now we need to pass the data that we wanna save as an object as the next argument. And this object is gonna represent the record that eventually gets saved in the collection. So it needs to have all of those correct attributes that we specified when we made that collection. Now, in the last lesson, we said that this function should accept an object called data, right? as an argument. And that data object should contain the properties we need for that record, the title, the author, and the description. So we can just spread those data properties into then this object. But on top of that, we also need the user ID property, which should be the ID of the user currently logged in, who's creating this book, right? And if you remember back to when we created these, uh, these attributes on app, right? We did that so that if we ever needed to fetch all the books, that a particular user created, we could use this user ID to do that by searching for it. And we'll see exactly how to do it later. Anyway, for now, let's add this user ID property to the object after the data. And the value of this needs to be the ID of whatever user is currently logged into the application. So we need a way to use that user state. And to do that, we can come up to the top of this component and say const and curly braces, and we want the user. And that comes from the use user hook, which we also need to import, and then we invoke that hook. So this user, remember, comes from the user context and gives us information about the currently logged in user, including the ID of that user. So back down in the create document method, we can use that user ID for the value right here by saying user dot, and then it's dollar sign ID. So that's the ID property that AppRite attaches to this user object for us. All right, so now we've passed the database ID, the collection ID, the new record ID, and now the data itself into that function that we wanna save, right? And there's one more argument that we need to pass in, which is an array of document permissions. So, you know, before when we set up the collection on AppRite, we checked the option that said something like allow document permissions. And what that meant is that we can apply user permissions at a document level so that we can restrict access to it on a user by user basis. And inside this array is where we declare those permissions when we create it. So then to make a permission, we use the permission class, which comes from AppRite. So make sure that gets imported. And then on that, we use a method to describe the interaction type that we wanna set a permission for. For example, that could be the read method to create a permission for read access to the document. And then inside this method, as an argument, we can say who has access to do this thing, to read it. And to do that, we can use a role class. Again, that comes from the AppRite package, so make sure you import it. And then we can specify the role to be a user, but not just any user. It needs to be the user who created this record, the user who is currently logged into this application doing this thing. And we have access to that. So we can just pass in, as an argument to this user method, the ID of the current user. And now we've set a document level permission, which only allows this current user logged in to read this document in the future. And that makes sense because if one user creates a book, we don't then want different users having access to that book. It's private, okay? So now I'm just gonna copy in another couple of permissions and these are coming from my course files. I'm just gonna paste them in over here underneath the other one. 
And these permissions just allow only that same user who is currently logged in to update and delete this record as well, because we will be adding those functionalities in the future, most likely. All right, cool. So now we finally need to invoke this function after a user enters the new book details into a form and submits it. And for that, we need to make a form on the create page inside the dashboard group. Now, I'm not gonna waste your time by writing this form out from scratch. We've already seen how to create forms when we created the authentication forms. Instead, what I'm gonna do is just copy some snippets from my course files and then walk you through them one bit at a time. So first of all, I'm gonna paste in the imports that we need. And you can see right here, we've got style sheet, we've got text, we've got touchable without feedback. I'm not sure whether I've shown you that yet or not, but we will cover it in a second. We've also got keyboard, um, which we're gonna to use to dismiss the keyboard. In fact, let me open up the auth screen, and take a look at these. So we don't have it in the login, but we do have it in the touchable without feedback, uh, feedback and the keyboard as well, yeah. So we have seen how to, to use those. Um, so we have those, we have the use books, use router and use state. Then we've got some themed components as well. All right, so next I'm going to paste in some state that we need inside this component. So let me do that right here. So we have a title, author and description. They're gonna come from input fields shortly. Then we've got some loading state as well, which we're gonna update when we try to save the new book. I'm also gonna copy a couple more things and paste them down here. So we have the create book function from the use books hook that gets it us from the context over here, this function, right? That's what we're gonna invoke when we submit the form eventually. And then after that, I'm gonna come down and grab all the template. Let me just copy all this and paste it down here, like so. And if I scroll to the top, it's very simple. So we have this touchable without feedback that wraps the entire thing. And we've seen what that does in the register form already. It just means that if we're within some kind of text input field and we click anywhere else on the screen, it's going to dismiss the keyboard. So that's all it does. Then inside that, we've got a view with some styles. We have some text for the title. Then we have a text input for the title itself. And we update the state, the title, when we type into that. Same for the author. And then same for the description. Only this time we set multi-line to be true because it's gonna be multiple lines that this text input is gonna be going down. And then down here we have a themed button. And when we press that, we're gonna fire a function which we've not created yet called handle submit. And then it's disabled this button when the loading state is true. So if we scroll back to the top, we created this loading state, right? It starts as false, but later when we submit the form, we're gonna set that to be true while it makes the request to save the new book. And that stops us then hitting the submit button again to try and make the request a second time until it's completed. Then inside that we have some text, which is white and the text depends on that loading state. If this is false, then it's gonna be create book. If it's true, then it's gonna say saving to let us know that we're currently trying to load something. All right, so that is the template. And in fact, no, we won't view it yet because I wanna create this function up here called handle submit. So let's do that, const handle submit and set that equal to a function. All right, so what do we wanna do inside this function? Well, first of all, we want to check that we have values in each of these things, right? And if we don't, we just wanna return out of the function for now. I mean, if you wanted to, what you could do is show some kind of error. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna skip that part and I'm just gonna return out of the function and not do anything else. So let me paste in this if check that says if title.trim, so we're trimming any white space. If we don't have a value for that, or the author, or the description, then we're just gonna return out of the function. We're not gonna go any further. We're not gonna to try to save the new book. All right, so the next thing we want to do is set the loading state to be true. So let's say set loading, and that's gonna be true because at this point, if we reach here, we know we have values for each of these and we're gonna try saving the book now, right? So we set loading to be true and that means that the button down here, while loading is true, is gonna be disabled. And also we're gonna show this text inside the button. Okay, so after that, we want to create the book. So we'll say await, and then we're gonna use that function create book that we just created and that comes from the use books hook so we invoke this and we pass in the data if we go back to the context you can see we expect that data so it's an object with the title author and description so title author 
description. They're all stored in those pieces of state. Now, we're getting an error here, and that's because this is not an asynchronous function yet, so let's make it one. Async, and then after this, once we've done this, and we're not going to do any error handling inside here, we're just going to try and do this for now. But after we've done it, we're going to reset the fields inside the form. So let's do that. I'm going to paste this in. And all we're doing is setting the title, author, and description back to their original default values, empty strings. And when we do that, because we have this two-way data binding using the value prop, it's going to update those forms to, or those form fields rather, to be those empty strings. So we're resetting the form. And then once we've done that, we want to redirect the user. So comment to say redirect, and then we will use that router that we used right here. Uh, that we grabbed rather, and then use a method on that called replace. And we're going to replace to the books screen. So that's this screen right here. And then finally, we need to update the loading again. So we'll say reset loading state. And to do that, we'll say set loading to be false because we're finished now. Okay. Now, the final thing I want to just paste inside this file is going to be some styles. So let me grab those from my repo. This is not really important. You've seen how to style components before. So let me paste them in. We have one for the container, heading, for the input fields themselves, and also for the multi-line one. If we go up here, you can see I give this one a class or a style rather of multi-line. That's for the description. So we style that a little bit different, all right? Okay, so let's save this now. And then I'm going to head to the profile, first of all. And I need to log in. So let's log in. Um, I think Bowser was an account at ninja.dev, if I can spell it. And then test one, two, three, four. I'm going to log in. All right. So now we can go to the create screen and I'm getting an error. Okay. So it turned out that in my use books hook that I created earlier, we didn't rename this to use books which was really silly. So now if I go to the profile page and then create, okay, cool. So now we can see that form and I'm going to try adding a new book. So let's say name of the wind by Patrick Rothfuss. And I'm just going to try this keyboard dismiss by clicking somewhere. Yeah, that works. And then book description, a rather good book. All right, very detailed. And then I'm gonna try creating this book. Hopefully we're gonna get redirected to the books page when we do that. Yeah, we did. And I don't know whether you saw it, if you were eager eyed, you might've seen that little loading message on the button itself when we submitted the form. And now on the project backend in AppRight, I'm gonna to go to databases and check inside this collection that a book has been added. So books, and yeah, we can see it, name of the wind, awesome.